Hey y'all, it's CJ with Smoky Beginnings. Today, I got a treat for you. I'm diving into the world of brisket, smoked to perfection on the pit barrel cooker. Picture this meat that has the perfect smoke ring, a crispy bark that adds a crunchy element, along with deliciously juicy meat that melts in your mouth. You are not gonna wanna miss this one. Before we get started, Make sure to check out our website, smokybeginnings.com, for all our, for our recipes. The link's in the description. And if you're new around here and like backyard barbecue cooking tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's go. Now I know what you're thinking. Brisket sounds amazing. Who's got the time to babysit a smoker for hours and hours on end? Well, fear not because today I'm showing you a shortcut and it's called the pit barrel cooker. Link in the description. First things first, let's talk about that brisket. We've got ourselves a beautiful beef brisket flat. Briskets usually have two parts, the flat and the point. When sold together, it is a whole packer brisket. However, grocery stores do sell them separately. In our case, the flat is what is currently on sale. It is a lean piece of meat and this one is right around six and a half pounds. It is already trimmed pretty well, but I will inspect it for any loose or hard fat that isn't going to render during the smoke. I will keep the trim fat that I remove as I can use that to make beef tallow or add to my ground beef. After removing the excess fat, we will season the brisket. Now, traditional Texas style brisket is seasoned with salt, pepper, and garlic, also known as SPG. What is different about this seasoning rib is that it's salt free. I have someone in the family that is on a low salt diet due to health issues. Therefore, I didn't want to add too much salt to this brisket. This seasoning blend consists of brown sugar, paprika, chili powder for some added heat, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, dried mustard, and allspice. Mix the seasoning blend thoroughly, then generously sprinkle the brisket flat on all sides. Depending on the size of the brisket, you may need to double the amount of seasoning. Once the brisket flat is seasoned, we will let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, we will start our pit barrel cooker. This whole smoke should take somewhere between two to four hours, so fill the charcoal basket completely full. Then load a full charcoal chimney. While the charcoal chimney is starting to do its thing, we will wait until the coals ass over and we see that bluish smoke. Once we reach that point, we will pour our lit coals onto the unlit coals. We will allow the pit barrel cooker to come up to temperature, which is usually anywhere from 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is actually the secret to cooking a brisket really fast. Most people will smoke their brisket anywhere from 185 degrees to 225 degrees. Not us and the pit barrel cooker. We're gonna be doing a hot and fast brisket right at 300 degrees. It's going to take about 15 minutes to get to that temperature. So while we are waiting, it is time to add the hooks to the brisket. That's right. We're going to be hanging the brisket flat on the hanging rods of the pit barrel cooker. And as a better safe than sorry measure, I'm going to add two hooks. The first hook will go through the thickest part of the meat. The second hook is inserted right below the first hook and will actually attach to the first hook. Now, into the pit barrel cooker it goes. Hang the brisket from the hanging rods, close the lid, and we will check in on the progress in just a little bit. A little side note is I did insert my Meter Plus probe to help track their internal temperature. There's a link in the description for that too. It has been 45 minutes and we are checking in on the progress. The internal temperature at this point is right around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And our first goal is going to get the bark to set. You'll know that the bark has set when you press down the brisket, there isn't any seasoning on your fingers. 
we aren't at that point. So we'll put the brisket back onto the pit barrel cooker, close the lid, and check back in a little bit. It has now been about 55 minutes and the internal temperature is at 129 degrees and the bark has appeared to have set. So we will now start our spritzing process. Today, the spritz is one can of Dr. Pepper in a spray bottle. I'll spritz the brisket every 15 minutes until the brisket reaches an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm not gonna show you every time I spritz, but I did end up spritzing the brisket probably about four to five times. And what I do is I completely remove the brisket from the pear barrel cooker and then spritz all sides. For me, it's easier than leaving the brisket inside of the pit barrel cooker uh, as I don't want to move around and worry about leaning up against any hot hanging rods. So I'll spritz away and I'll get this brisket back onto the pit barrel cooker. It has now been about two hours and 15 minutes and we reached our desired internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It's time to take off the brisket and wrap it. We're using the Texas Crutch method, which just means that we're gonna wrap it in aluminum foil. Before we complete the wrap, we will add a little bit of bacon grease or beef tallow on top. Since this is a lean cut of beef, I wanted an extra amount of fat to prevent the meat from drying out. I will also add the remaining Dr. Pepper into the foil. I will double wrap the brisket before putting it back onto the smoker. After placing the wrap brisket onto the grill grates, insert the hanging rods and close the lid. Now, we just wait for the meat probe to let us know that we have reached our desired internal temperature of 203 degrees Fahrenheit. It has now been about 3 hours and 29 minutes. I received an alert from my Meter Plus Pro, link in the description, saying that we have hit the 203 mark. I have a secondary meat probe that I will use to double check the internal temperature. And to be honest, I'm not really measuring the internal temperature. I'm more so poking the brisket in spots to see if my probe goes in and out of the meat smoothly. This will let me know when the brisket is ready, as the probe should go in and out of the brisket with ease, which it does. I will now remove the brisket from the smoker, wrap it in a towel, and place it in a cooler to rest for a minimum of one hour. I usually let it rest for about two hours unless I'm in a rush. Letting the brisket rest will allow the juices to redistribute through the meat. It's been about two hours, and it's time to slice into the brisket. All you gotta do is remove the brisket from the cooler and the aluminum foil. You may wanna wear some gloves as the brisket should still be warm and there may be some steam that is released off of the brisket. What I'm doing here is a little bit of a jiggle test to see how tender the meat is. If the meat is stiff, that means it's pretty dry. If the meat jiggles, it should be juicy and tender. As with all types of meat, I'm gonna cut this brisket against the grain. And flipping the brisket over so that the meat side is facing up and the fat side is facing down is a way that you're able to see the muscle fibers a little bit better and you're more easily able to cut against the grain. You're gonna to wanna to thinly slice the brisket against the grain and enjoy. And there you have it. A brisket smoked on the pit barrel cooker. We have a beautiful smoke ring, a crispy bark. The meat should bend but not break under its own weight. And you should be able to pull it apart with ease, which we have accomplished. All that is left to do is enjoy this tender brisket with the family. If you like content like this, make sure to like and subscribe as that is the best way to support the channel. Check out smokybeginnings.com for all the our recipes. The link's in the comments. And until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.